I do not own the rights to this music, but I'm representing for my Caribbean culture, so I'm going to play it, goddammit. Welcome to everybody that's tuning in so far. I just like to party a little bit before I get things going, that's all. Yo, yeah, what's the deal, man? Chillin', man. You can hear me? I can hear you, man. I just like to set a vibe before I start. You know what I mean? I, <laughs> All right. I just like to set a tone, man. You know what yeah. I mean? That that's become ritual. That's become ritualistic, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers to that. Cheers, man. Cheers, man. How's everything? Pretty good, man. How about you? Listen, man, I'm all right, man. We got less in the building. You know what I mean? Storyboard in the building, forceful purpose in the building, Musso in the building. You know, B was good. What up, Les? B was good. B was good. B in the house? Yeah, B in the house, man. Your, your people's, man, here in the house, man. I wish you name, up. man. Dubs up. You know, we'll give a couple more people some time to get up in here, you know. No doubt. Musso, I appreciate you being on the show last night. You know what I mean? Great job. Appreciate you. You know, but, um, you know, this is, this is a long time coming and, uh, and I'm glad you, you know, you agreed to it, man. Of course, man. You family. You yeah. know, I always told you I had a story to tell and God damn it. I wanted to be the one to tell it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. No doubt. So we appreciate gonna, it, man. Appreciate so, it. So we're going to get to it tonight. All worlds collab. You know what I mean? That's um, right. All right, now we're going to get to it, man. I got a special beat, man, that I had my cousin prepare for me. You know what I mean? Oh, your cousin um, got beats? Yeah, he got beats, man. You know what I mean? I'm surrounded by great creators like creatives like yourself. You know what I mean? Hey, Kurt, you the plug, man. Everybody's satellite around you. Listen, man, I'm just blessed to know a bunch of extremely talented people. You know what I mean? One of them being yourself. You know what I mean? But with that being said... Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. You are now tuned in to the TKB Report. And I'm your host, K. Langeron. And if you haven't seen the new story, AKA Mr. Three Keys has arrived. That's right. Today's guest is the architect. Of Mr. Three Keys. Today's guest is also the architect of many, many masterful artistic pieces that we've seen all throughout Brick City, both our hometowns, and throughout the state of New Jersey. When you think of, you know, and I got my hip hop attire on, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? My, my Run DMC, you know, inspired <laughs> attire. But when you think about the elements of hip hop, which is a culture that the world loves, a culture that we especially love, you think about MCing for sure. You think about DJing. You think about b-boying. You think about beatboxing. But there are five elements to hip hop. And that fifth element often gets forgotten. You know, but it, it's not a place in the world that you can't go where you won't see it. And that is the art of graffiti, urban art, street art, however you want to phrase it. And my guest today is one of the illest in the game coming out of the state of New Jersey in the world, period. Ladies and gentlemen, help me in welcoming none other than my man, known to his cohorts, known to his compadres, known to the street culture as Dace. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm all, I'm all hip hopped out, man. I went out and bought a. Uh, yeah, man. I'm about to start b boying. You know what I'm saying? I went, I went out and bought a, 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 a black jean jacket just to, just to get in the vibe. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Just to get in the vibe. Yeah, Yo, yeah. welcome to the show, man. Welcome to the show. 
Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Listen, I'm, I'm going to start off with a story. And I'm hoping it wasn't your art, right? Okay. So this had to be around 1986, 87 maybe. And I'm walking on Clinton Place. I'm walking past uh, University High School. We came out of practice from Blessed Sacrament, right there on Clinton Ave. We got chased off the bus stop. It was late night, you know what I mean? I ain't start doing this till later on. So we ran, you know what I mean? <laughs> and we walking past, it's me, my, my baby brother, and like two other of my boys. We walking past University High School, and I'm reading, I call it the street literature. I'm reading all the graffiti on University High School. I'm like, damn, this is good shit. But then it got real quiet. I said, damn, like, what is going on? I turned, and this a dude got a gun in my face, and he just keep pulling the trigger. And I'm like, I'm like, yo! And then I hear, yo, run, run, run. I look, my brothers and them, the whole dash, because they seen the dude already, the gun kept jamming. But I told that story because of this. There's something about graffiti, right? Kiki, um, salute. I actually want to talk to her, too. Hope everything's well with you, the husband, baby girl. But um, I'm like, yo, it's some because he was good. It's something about that art that captivated me. Well, I almost got shot in the face because of it, man. <laughs> I've been there before, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm hoping, and I'm hoping that it's not your art that I was captivated by that almost got my face blown off, man. But, so nah, not 86, man. Not 86. You know what I'm saying? But check it. What was it about, like, graffiti that you wanted to pick that as your form of contributing to the culture? Because there ain't no graffiti artist on the planet that's not thinking about the hip hop culture. Whew, man, that's a loaded question. Um, where do I start? First of all, man, I'm pretty much a late bloomer in the game. You know, like around that time, 86, um, I wasn't even into graffiti, to be honest. Um, I was like a cartooning cat, you know? My mom used to take me to this store in, uh, in New York called Forbidden Planet, I think it was, Forbidden something. And it had all of these, uh, these comic books that I never saw before from Japan. Yo, I was in anime back in like 82, 83 before people even knew about it. Um, so anyway, you know, I, was, I went to school for, for cartooning and illustration. And my best friend, you, you met him, um, his graffiti name is Fleck now, but back then he was Dez. We was in the same homeroom. I, like, I knew they were part of it, but I wasn't, you know, I was just on the outskirts. I wasn't really part of that. So fast forward, um, I go to college. I'm in Philadelphia, University of the Arts. Okay. And my second year, you know, things start getting hectic, man. Like, black students start getting kicked out, you know, leaving. It was hard, man. So, like, we, <laughs> we kind of got a little rebellious. Them jokers started writing all stuff. I'm like, yo, let me, let me try that, you know? So um, this is around the time when, like, Das Effects was out. So I was like, I like that. Das, that sounded like my name, you know, Dadisi. So I started writing Das. And um, one of my professors was like, do you write, do you go by the name of Das? I was like, no, oh, what you talking about? <laughs> Tried to give me the snitch of myself. <laughs> I was like, nah, man. So I, then I changed it up. I threw the E on there. Started to call myself Day. So started getting up in Philadelphia. Had to come home, couldn't afford art school no more. So I get home and I'm like, yo, I want to do this. So I reach out to my boy Fleck. And he's like, you know, it's kind of dead right now. But both of us unemployed, ain't nothing to do. I'm in this rebellious spirit. So I get him back into it. So he then calls Brian B, my other brother, shout out to B. Um, and we all just get together and just start Wow, man, we start <laughs> start tearing the city up, man. And um, a lot of people might not want to hear this, but I will say that event right there re-sparked the graffiti moving movement in Newark because it was kind of dead up until then. So, so Dace, you the doctor that put the gel on the charges, and you wrote on like, "Yo, clear, boom, <laughs> right?" Yeah. So now graffiti culture is back in the city of Newark, right? So yeah. that's your that's your beginning. And that's one of the ill stories, man. Like when you look at like movies like Beach Street, Wild Style, Crush Groove, 
you, you think that jokers are kind of born into this and just can't wait to find that white train, yeah. you know what I mean, and tag it up. But you talked about it being a rebellious, um, you know, it started from, be, from a rebellious state. Yeah. Talk about um, that type of energy and how it, like, transformed into the rebirth of hip-hop. Because it's always a crew that comes along with that. You know what I mean? Right. There's, right. A, there's a dancer, there's a graffiti artist, there's a DJ, there's a producer, there's a rapper. Like, you know, so talk about how that, how that all came together. Uh, like I said, man, at the time, I'm like 18, 19. So you already, you know, got, got a little bit of fire in you. You want to you wanna rage against something, right? So um, like I said, when I get back, having trouble finding work, so I'm like, man, I, I could do this graffiti stuff, you know. I wasn't that good at it. I was always good at doing characters. Um, so I said, let me start. Let me start with that. Start with the characters. Then I just started practicing the letters, and and you know, um, took it from there. But yeah, it's it's kind of like um, I don't want to compare it to a gang culture in a way. It kind of is, but it's not that negative, you know. Um, that's part of the allure to it. Like you know, you're going against going against the machine. You know, you're doing stuff. That's really illegal, but it's for the art, you know. It's for the, it's for the it's for the love of it. So like, my crew, it was a two man crew. Um, I always knew them, but I never rolled with them. Um, and they had respect. And like at that time, you're talking ninety two, ninety three, when I came home, a lot of the old heads kind of like stopped. Um, I don't want to say it was dead, but it was really just us and maybe like a few other little crews doing stuff here and there. But when we started going out catch a wreck it's like we woke up the city again everybody wanted to come back out so you know that's how that started it's just like a rebel a, re a rebellious culture thing too because it's underground you know what i'm saying You're young it's illegal so 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 i just want to i just want to say this i checked the statute of limitations and i checked the laws <laughs> you know defacing a building is a misdemeanor and the statute yeah. of limitation in new jersey is far going from 1990s so we are free to talk about whatever it is that we need to talk about you know what I'm saying? <laughs> moving forward so you can be comfortable hagadala in the building so you can be comfortable uh talking about it 